baby, back at it again as we're diving into the review of my 444,000 odd dollar stock portfolio from the Canadian perspective as we review not only the US market, is it getting bubbly here, but obviously my Canadian stocks and why I'm selling stocks still, obviously putting some money aside, I do wanna buy some real estate here, but we need to talk about the AI bubble itself or is it even a bubble? And this is just gonna be a well-rounded conversation of what happened in the market this week. So hit that like button. If it's a conversation you'd always appreciate because first and foremost, the fear and greed index is getting greedy baby uh, and I don't know if this has some fundamental truths behind it as we play in this gray area AI is what's propelling the markets obviously it's all tech related and is it a bubble or is there some fundamental truth as crypto had no real backing it had no real technology being used here but when it comes to the ai discussion it's more business to business so the retail audience might not be experiencing it especially with companies like palantir right because palantir is mostly focused on military government things like that and kramer was discussing this kind of bull bear case behind it and i found it very intriguing i'm working with companies right now and that is the discussions they said six months ago we had no use for ai now it's pretty much in every aspect of our business because of the software applications, right? So it's it's kind of got to ask yourself, is it going to add some fundamental revenue, some margin increases? And we're going to start discovering that over the next quarter. I think this next quarter is going to be the brick wall that's going to define where the market goes, if it flatlines, if it takes a breath. And we're going to kind of break down some of the price to earnings multiples in this bull market rally uh, as seen based off the NASDAQ companies that have been driving the market, right? Because if we take a look here, Today has been cooling off a little bit. We're not seeing these same kind of ridiculous rallies we've been seeing over the week. We're seeing a bit of cooling period outside of Tesla, uh, which obviously partnered with its uh, electric vehicle charging stations with GM, you know, Ford. These people are realizing that, hey, you own any other EV company, it's impossible to charge anywhere you go without access to that. So it's nice to see Tesla's getting a bit of hype there, but we'll get into some fundamentals on that as well. But take a look, Palantir, a lot of these companies have just been flatlining or pulling back uh, into this uh, Friday. We're not seeing these aggressive rallies, which again, I think is gonna start to cool off. It's just my personal opinion. I wouldn't bet against it. Uh, obviously, if you're 65 years old, I would probably be mostly out of this market, to be honest. If I was 65 retiring, 50% of my money gonna go in money market funds, bonds, GICs, you can get over five damn percent. A lot of those pay even monthly and just not focus on the ridiculousness of what's going on here. And cause you can, you just can't rely on this. It's just, it's too extreme. And I'm gonna break down why it's too extreme. Now, if you're younger, uh, you can't help but rely on this. This is your future. If you got 30, 40 year outlook, damn it, just cost average. Buy the bottoms as much as you bought the tops. It's all you're gonna be able to do here because fundamentally, if someone tells you they know what's going on, they're a complete and utter idiot. I'm a clown, all these YouTubers are clowns, but that's why I'm bringing you the truth, baby. So taking a look at the QQQs here, and I, I love how people just keep talking about the applications of AI rather than the fundamentals of these businesses that are operating within them. So we're gonna talk about Microsoft, Apple, uh, Amazon, NVIDIA. The, these are the tech companies propelling this stuff because in the QQQ ETF, this NASDAQ 100 ETF, these companies make up over, what, 50% of the holdings. So let's just start first and foremost by just banging through these really quick so we can get into the portfolio review and my thoughts on the market here. Uh, because firstly, as mentioned, the PE ratios are beginning to explode, but the net earnings and EPS have not. Uh, so we can see with something like Microsoft here, we are just like Apple back to pretty much all time highs, leading the price to earnings multiple back to where it was during this pandemic rally. You know, when everyone was at home, technology took a big boom and that drive the price to earnings multiple up to the, about the 35 range at the peak with a company like Microsoft. But we are back there now, yet the earnings are not growing. To demand such a high price to earnings multiple, you'd think you'd have to see this kind of explosiveness and growth. Now, that's gonna to be to, to be determined based on this quarterly earnings, which again, this is the last month before we start getting into those earnings. You look at a company like Apple, it's been flatlining on its EPS pretty much for the last like you know good four or five months here and yet you know we saw the price to earnings go down to a more healthier 2022 20, level and now we're back up to again 30 where we saw it uh before obviously the, you know the big pandemic boom or just after it and a lot of this could be driven to by the hype and their oculus their version of you know meta has their oculus vr now apple wants to get into the space by just making the ultimate tech at whatever the cost is and uh, you know if we learn anything from ready player one in my humble opinion I love what Apple's doing. I just think they're doing it in the wrong way. I think Meta's got the better approach, which is like make it more retail friendly, make it focused toward gamers like me. I use, I'll be buying the new Quest for Meta. I will not be buying the Apple one uh, because hey, most people playing VR are gamers. Get them hooked first and foremost, and then build on the tech, making it more
more affordable in time. Whereas Apple's doing it in this reverse mechanism way. Let's just make the tech so extreme for all the stuff people aren't using it for. And then we'll just see what happens, right? And we'll get some of the developers and, and make it more, I don't know, we'll see what happens. It's just my personal opinion. I do think they'll have some future in it for sure, but I think Meta's still winning. But taking a look at Amazon, same deal. Amazon, let's not, let's not even talk about Amazon's priced earnings because they, they never focus on EPS anyways. So we can take a look at Nvidia here. This is probably the most outlandish company when it comes to this metric. Obviously, they raised their guidance. They doubled their guidance, but their price to earnings multiple like quadrupled. I mean, you take a look at this from 57 PE when it was falling off a cliff on their EPS. Look at how far their EPS has dropped. And now it's up to over 200 based off, you know, the, these past earnings and the stock and everything. Just fundamentally, I think there's a massive disconnect happening here. And I could be wrong. We'll see what the earnings lead to. Maybe the earnings fully recover this EPS growth and it's back on track. I don't know, but again, to be determined. You look at a company like Meta here, probably the, one of the more favorable valued companies, but again, when it was on that wicked trend upwards of EPS during the pandemic boom, the price to earnings was still at the most favorable levels of, you know, what, 20 to 25. And again, it can't get over that it dropped down to as low as 12, man. Congrats to anybody that bought it. But this is, again, what happens. Companies get projected into the future. So if this company is losing money, people are gonna over project that out. And then if this company starts making money again, they're gonna over project that. So the price swings in the stock are gonna be absolutely uh, outlandish. And that's what we're seeing, right? I mean, you take a look at this, we're back up to a 32 times multiple, even though EPS hasn't even started to fully recover. Tesla, uh, another good example here, right? Tesla's earnings have started to flatline from the, the baseline. They're cutting margins. And something tells me this is where we see the brick wall get hit. Uh, even though there, there's a lot going on, Cybertruck could be coming out uh, by the end of this year, and they have over a million reservations that could start converting to real cash flow. Uh, I mean, you know, not that we're going to have some self-driving technology, I think, fully commercialized this year, but none of that's really hitting the bottom line, yet people are still basing it into some of the expectations, and it's driven the price, the, the earnings multiple, price PE, to being over double. So putting that aside, folks, I still think this is a very speculative market. I'd be very cautious about all of it. Uh, until things start to nominalize out a bit. I, I don't think we're out of the recessionary environment when interest rates are still going up and inflation is still as high as it is, especially here in Canada, which is why I'm trying to set myself up to take advantage of a once in a lifetime opportunity to get into the real estate market. I was talking to a realtor today, I'm gonna go look at houses on Monday. I don't plan on buying this year, but if the right price approaches me, I'm sure I could negotiate a closing into next year or something of, of the likes if things really kind of went in that direction. So I have been putting away cash. I sold a bit more of my S&P. I brought it down to about 108,000 invested in total um, so per currently I'm sitting on about 112,000 of cash just under 332,000 invested I'm only down about 3,800 bucks uh, the market has been correcting quite a bit to the upside with a lot of the stocks we'll look at obviously my portfolio not being as tech centric isn't seeing the same kind of rallies but we're not really anywhere up or down uh, just more or less collecting the dividends uh, if anything with the dividend collection we should probably be closer to the green with the recent rallies um, but again I'm fine with this for the time being as I do have this idea of how I want my portfolio to be moving forward and I do want to get more tech centric uh, but right now I'm just kind of in this perplexed is going to be the word of this kind of era for me because I don't know how much risk I want to take in the market uh, because obviously if I plan on utilizing the most of this cash to buy a house and most of these investments I was like continue to scale them down to buy a house I don't want to be in this volatile roller coaster ride right so I'd rather be steady Eddie here because between me and my fiance we've got a stupid stupendous amount of money to put a down payment on a property so we're gonna take this really cautiously patiently and just see what kind of comes up as it comes up right as we get some more dividend checks coming in from BDY VOO and talking about the performance of these ETFs and the continual idea of what's going on in the Canadian market if the housing market will burst. I do want to point out if you do enjoy this portfolio overview, uh, you can support the channel by going to PortfolioSpreadsheet.com. You buy one, you get one for each platform. I also sell personal finance spreadsheets sold separately. Buy one of those, get one for each platform to track your fire till perhaps one day retire early, your financial independence, right? But take a look. I'm not complaining, right? Because the S&P is what's been keeping my portfolio flat as SCHD pulled back, VDY pulled back. Uh, the S&P has been rallying consistently. It's up 13 point, you know, over 13%. My cost average basis, I think up across all my accounts, I'm up something probably closer to seven or 8% uh, over this year, which is really nice. VDY has been relatively flat for this year, but again, you're collecting over four and a half percent yield. Uh, that again is paid monthly so you are green on this one if you've been just cost averaging into it most of my accounts however i am down uh, on the capital basis uh, because i was buying this one earlier into uh you know the year prior so i am not seeing any real good cap gains on that one uh, and SCHD, I think, is where some real value uh, resides. And same with BDY. Uh, everyone's written off a lot of these dividend companies now. 
and they've been trading at much more discounted multiples for the risk that presents in the market, uh, especially with banks. Obviously, people are very fearful of bank loans. But again, you kind of got to remind yourself is you think this is going to be 2008. And I think to some extent, uh, you know, the supply and demand metrics on the housing market in Canada are going to get pressured here. Uh, you know, people might be struggling to make those mortgage payments. And if a bunch of them flood into putting their houses on the market, and you know, well, what if the people with cash like me can afford to keep buying them up, then maybe the market will stay stable. I don't know. Um, but that's why I still think, you know, looking at these companies uh, that are just underappreciated right now when it comes to banks, when it comes to things like the Schwab US dividend equity ETF, where price to earnings multiples just aren't outside of the realm of, of plausibility and, and, you know, speculative natures of the AI and stuff. And a lot of these companies will be implementing robotics and AI anyways. Um, so I'm surprised that they've been so largely written off at these price points. So, you know, these are things I'm always going to hold in my portfolio. What I'm going to end up trying to do is sell basically 35,000 is what I have access to uh, without getting taxed to buy a property in my um, RRSP. I'm going to be taking advantage of pulling money out of my corporation utilizing the T or the FHSA because I can put 8,000 a year. So if I put 8,000 at the end of the year, 8,000 at the beginning of the year, that would be 16,000. My fiance does the same. That's another 30,000 uh, that is tax-free income that I can have access to. Uh, I'm probably gonna be liquidating most of my uh, TFSA, which I'll have to rebuild back up. And all of this is in that idea of, again, not all my investments are going into a property. The vast majority will, but again, that's at the idea of not having to pay interest payments. Uh, because when I look at what it costs to rent here, it'd be around $3,000 a month. Uh, to get a, a good rental for something to bed to bath if that's what we're after and that's a lot I mean with living expenses I mean you're you're well over 50 to 60 thousand a year whereas if we can pretty much own a property with a hundred thousand or less mortgage you know at five or six percent our entire living expenses would be less than three thousand a year which would be the cost of rent anyways and I think that would give us prime to continue to stack into our 30s and build out our retirement portfolio with very little mortgage payments uh, which I think is something that we're blessed to be able to say in a market environment like this but i would pass that question off to you and as always i want to know what you think in that comment section below